Good day, friends. This is Bible Class Topics, and it's another topical lesson, this time based on Genesis 3.9. Then the Lord called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? The Lord God had planted a beautiful garden in Eden and placed the first man and woman there. Adam and Eve were given only one law of restraint. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Genesis 2, verse 17. We all know the story. Satan came and deceived Eve by twisting God's word. Eve broke God's law and sinned by eating the forbidden tree's fruit. Then she gave the fruit to Adam, who also sinned and ate of the tree. Upon eating the fruit, they realized their nakedness and covered themselves. Then they heard the Lord walking in the garden, and in their shame and sin, they tried to hide from God. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? Genesis 3, verse 9. God's question to Adam is the first recorded question in the Bible. It was a relevant question of tremendous importance. The question was asked by God, who had walked and talked with Adam and Eve, and from whom they now shamefully hid. He was their creator, the all-knowing and all-seeing Jehovah. Let's take a lengthy reading from Psalm 139, verses 1 through 10. We'll be reading from the ESV. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in behind and before and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. Try as they might, Adam and Eve could not hide from God. He knew good and well where they were. Well, if the Lord knew where Adam and Eve were, why did he bother to ask? God did not ask the question for his sake, but for the sake of Adam and Eve. He wanted them to realize where they were and why they were where they were. They were separated and hiding from the fellowship of God in shame because of their sin. first question recorded in the Bible is still relevant and essential today. God is still asking, where are you? He asked the question of you and me. He knows the answer. How will you respond? How will I respond? Where are you concerning salvation? If you're of the age to know right from wrong, then you have sinned by now. You've transgressed the law of God. Where are you, God asks? Are you trying to hide from God behind your sin and shame? Try as you might. You'll never hide from God, just as Adam and Eve could not hide from God in the Garden of Eden. Do you understand that just where you are as a sinner, you're not hiding, you're lost, and you're headed for eternal destruction? Jesus declared in Luke 19.10, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. He gave up everything to look for you and to look for me. Paul the Apostle said this in Philippians 2, 6 through 8. He who being in the form of God, that is Jesus, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. 
If you understand where you are as a sinner, then it's time to come out from hiding, to be found by Jesus and become obedient to him in faith and baptism. Where are you when the saints assemble? Are you a Christian? Are you assembling with the saints? When the saints assemble on Sunday morning or Sunday evening or Wednesday evening or whenever to worship God and study his word, where are you? If they're streaming online, if they're having a Zoom meeting, where are you? God knows where you are when you're not meeting with other saints. He sees each person who professes to be a Christian who's sitting at home watching his TV or out bowling or playing golf when the saints are assembled to worship God. As David asked, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? As we read earlier in Psalm 139 verse 7. In John 20, 19 and 20, the disciples were assembled on a Sunday evening except for one man, Thomas. We often call him Doubting Thomas. Perhaps that's not fair. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed him his hands and his side, and then the disciples were glad when they had seen or when they saw the Lord. Well, we do not know where Thomas was, but we know where he was not. In his absence, he missed the fellowship of the other disciples. He missed the encouragement and the shared faith that they all enjoyed. But above all, he missed having fellowship with the Lord that day. Fortunately for Thomas, the following Sunday, Thomas came out from his hiding from the assembly of the disciples and was present with the disciples when Jesus appeared again. The question is, will you come out of your hiding place this coming Sunday or whenever the next time your congregation meets together? Will you come out of your hiding place and come and assemble with the saints? Where are you when it's time to work? When there's work to be done for the Lord? Well, the Lord told the prophet Jonah he had some work to do, and the work was to go and preach to the city of Nineveh. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare, went down into it, to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Jonah 1 verse 3. Jonah tried to pull the old Adam and Eve disappearing act on the Lord, and he was just as unsuccessful as they were. Jonah learned a hard lesson that he could not run away from the Lord and the work the Lord had for him to do. Where are you when there is work to be done for the Lord? Where am I when there is work to be done for the Lord? Are you running and hiding as Jonah and Adam and Eve had done before him? When the church building, the meeting place where your congregation of saints assembles needs to be cleaned or repaired, where are you? When it comes time to contribute to the Lord's work, whether it be in a monetary fashion or just plain sweat of your brow, where are you? When visiting the sick needs to be done, where are you? When teaching classes or teaching individuals needs to be done, where are you? It is truly astonishing how quickly people disappear when the Lord's work needs to be done. Well, you may hide from the elders or the preacher, or you may even hide from yourself, but you will never be able to run away from God when his work needs to be done. Where will you be on the day of judgment? Where will you be when that day of judgment comes? Will you be on the left hand of the Lord, ready to go into everlasting fire, or on the right hand of the Lord, prepared to go to heaven? Where were you concerning salvation? 
when the saints assembled and when there was work to be done? Well, the answer to those questions will determine where you will be on the day of judgment. And sadly, many will be in the same place they have always been, hiding from God. Those who spend this life hiding from God in sin and darkness will spend an eternity hidden away from God in shame in the farthest reaches of that darkness. Well, it's time to stop hiding from God. First of all, it cannot be done. All one ends up doing is hiding from himself and from the reality of God's presence. We must come out into the light of God's salvation. We must be present when the saints assemble. We must be present when the Lord's work needs to be done. And we will then be able to sit on the Lord's right hand, ready to inherit heaven on the day of judgment. This lesson was published and available for download at www.padfield.com. Its copyright is held by its author, Wayne Greeson, and we thank him for providing that outline and allowing us to use it in this lesson. Of course, thank you for watching. Thank you for studying with me. Your support of the channel is greatly appreciated. Until we meet again, may God bless.